That's good, all right. Well, good morning, everyone. We'll go ahead and uh, get started. Um, I'm Representative Bobby Cox of District 21 of Greenville County. And thank you all for joining us on this historic day for our state. Um, thank you to uh, Palmetto State Armory for hosting us. Um, I have to tell you that I bought uh, quite a few guns here. Um, and since my wife and kids are in the audience, I won't tell you how many guns I bought. But uh, I visit this store often. We're so glad that they uh, were able to host us today. This bill, the Open Carry with Training Act, is a big step in restoring our constitutional freedoms and allowing individuals more options to protect themselves and their families. As we are working on a date to actually sign this bill, um, we worked with the governor and we decided August 13th was gonna be the day. And then after a couple of, couple of times looking at the calendar, I realized that was Friday the 13th. And so I'm like, oh man, what a, you know, a scary, unlucky day is usually the reputation that goes along with it. But as I started to think about it, it's, it's kind of fitting. You know, we live in a scary, uncertain world and there are evil that's, that's out there that seeks to do harm to the innocent people that we know. And so with this bill, we'll be able to have more options to protect against that evil when it comes knocking to our individuals and our families. So whether it be any day or Friday the 13th, any day is a good day to advance the Second Amendment, and that's what we're doing here today. So no, uh, no effort is done alone. I've, for my short period of time in the uh, legislature, I've realized this is a team sport. Uh, we all don't go at it alone. So I just want to recognize several folks that have made this possible. I want to recognize the governor for being here today to show the importance of Second Amendment and being in here in the upstate. Uh, Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant uh, Governor uh, Pamela Evett as well. I heard she's a pretty good shot. So thanks for being here today, ma'am. I'd like to thank my fellow legislators who co-sponsored this bill. This was a bipartisan effort with 70 co-sponsors. One of the reporters asked me early on, why are we signing this bill in Greenville? And I said, in Greenville and in the upstate, we believe in the Constitution and we love the right to bear arms. That's why we're signing this here today. I'd like to thank uh, Representative Mike Kikaski, my colleague. He was the, the uh, chairman who uh, kind of ushered the bill through the subcommittee and onto the floor. Um, he's a Marine, so I'll talk in small words since I'm an Army guy. So, but I appreciate his focus on this policy. I'd really like to thank the Speaker of the House, Jay Lucas, who has let us work on not one, but two of the strongest Second Amendment bills to go through the House and the Senate in the last 25 years. In a time where we saw a pandemic shutting down this, this country, uh, violent protests throughout some of our greatest cities, the rhetoric to defund the police, and then the constant rhetoric that we hear from the federal government to take our guns, the State House answered the call and listened to the constituents and put forward measures to protect our Second Amendment rights. Not only did we pass this bill into law, but we passed constitutional carry, which sits in the Senate, and we look forward to them passing that quickly in next session. So I want to thank Mr. Speaker for letting me lead on this effort. Where is he? There, sir. There. So thank you very much, sir, yes, for sir. doing that. So I'd like to thank the National uh, Rifle Association, especially DJ Spiker, who helped support on this issue. I believe he's here in the crowd. And as well as all the grassroots effort, South Carolina Carry, um, all the uh, responsible gun owners that reached out to us, and all constituents who are worried about uh, their Second Amendment rights. Thank you very much. So what does this bill do? Real quickly, with the signing of this bill, South Carolina will get out of the group of Florida, New York, Illinois, and California who don't have any form of open carry of a handgun, and it'll put us with 45 other states who have some type of open carry of a handgun. So this is a proven policy throughout the country. And as we've seen in those states who have open carry, this doesn't turn the state into the wild, wild west. Um, I'm sure uh, all of us has been to North Carolina and Georgia. They have open carry, and I bet you didn't even know it. So this is proven, and this is safe. On August 15th at midnight, two days from now, this bill will go to effect. Where you can currently carry concealed with a permit, you can carry openly with a handgun as well. The, the bill does away with the fee required to get a permit from SLED and it minimizes the amount of ammo that you need to use to qualify. As we know, ammo is very hard to find right now. Also it allows churches and religious bodies who are using schools for their places of worship, the ability to carry in those schools during their worship times. So previously, these bodies of believers had no way to protect themselves due to federal law, and now they do when they use schools for worship services. 
And finally, and I want to leave you with this, one of the most important measures that is coming out of this is to actually make South Carolina a Second Amendment sanctuary state. And what does that mean? Any time that the federal government tries to enact anti-Second Amendment measures, no state resources will be used to enforce that. We must protect against federal overreach, and that's what this bill does. And that's one of the most important measures in there. So if you have any other questions, uh, I know the governor's going to take some later on. You can go to SLED's website, and they would lay it down very succinctly of what, uh, what this bill is all about. So this is a historic day. I didn't mean to talk this long, but, uh, you know, I'm a politician, so we just like to talk a lot. But I tell you, any time we can advance the Second Amendment is a good day, and today is a good day in South Carolina. So thank you all for being here. Um, I have the pleasure to introduce my friend and quite possibly the best sheriff in the United States of America, uh, Sheriff Hobart Lewis, to speak next. Thank you, Sheriff. Well, that's pretty good. That's, that's uh, quite the compliment there. Thank you all for being here. We certainly want to thank our legislators who have made this possible and fought so hard to get this bill passed. Uh, we do live in unprecedented times, and this is a historic moment for sure uh, that we plant that flag of freedom uh, and support the Constitution. As your sheriff here in Greenville County and many other sheriffs who supported this bill, uh, we look forward to the signing of it here shortly. But none of this would have been possible uh, had it not been for our elected officials who believe in the Constitution and believe in upholding the Second Amendment. So that's important. Uh, we're very fortunate not only to have a governor who believes in the Second Amendment, but the speaker who you'll hear from here shortly. When you talk about the rules of open care with training uh, that takes effect on Sunday, Chief Kills couldn't be here, uh, but he and his staff with SLED have worked tirelessly uh, to make a lot of changes. When you look at the concealed weapons program we currently have, waiving the fees, uh, applications have went up considerably, so we certainly uh, take our hat off to him and all the great work that they've done to prepare for this. Uh, but people need to know this is uh, open care with training. There are still some exclusions to this. Schools, courthouses, those kind of things. Uh, need to be mindful of that to keep yourself certainly out of, uh, of trouble with law enforcement when it comes to those places that are prohibited. Uh, so we ask that people be mindful of that. You can look at our website at gcso.org. You can go to SLED's website. You can also look at our Facebook page. Uh, we will have the law posted here shortly where people can review that so they know what to expect uh, from law enforcement and how to interact with law enforcement or if you are open carry and you come in contact with law enforcement. Uh, so we certainly, again, we appreciate so much having such great elected officials here, so much great community support in our part of the state that supports the Second Amendment. Uh, we're certainly going to stand strong and to, to add to this being a Second Amendment sanctuary in South Carolina, I don't think people realize what a big deal that is uh, until a few months from now when uh, it's constantly under attack. Uh, so it's important for us to certainly stand our ground. I'm very fortunate to have the opportunity uh, again to introduce somebody. It takes a lot to get a bill passed through and we follow this thing. We certainly appreciate Representative Cox who fought so hard. Uh, we appreciate one of our county council members, Steve Shaw, who worked on a county level to, to make this happen. Uh, a lot of people certainly join into the mix, but without the speaker's uh, support, that certainly could have been slowed down. Uh, they certainly make a decision sometimes to do things that may not be very popular, and they're kind of step out on a limb on a few different things, uh, but this is important. It's important to you, it's important to your families, and it's important for law enforcement. I'm very thankful that we have a Speaker of the House uh, who represents law enforcement, stands behind law enforcement, and supports law enforcement, as well as the government. So I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our Speaker, Jay Lucas. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Sheriff Lewis, thank you for that very, very kind introduction. And before I start um, by recognizing just a few people, um, I want to talk about law enforcement just briefly in this bill and how Mark Keel, the chief of SLED, and our highway patrolman and wonderful sheriffs like Sheriff Lewis and our, even our, our city policeman got on board and, and maintained a diligent conversation with us about this bill. Uh, you know, the Second Amendment is a fundamental right, and today's a great day because we are strengthening that right. But supporting law enforcement is something we do fundamentally, Mr. Cox. 
And unlike other states, we stand behind law enforcement. We're going to continue to fund law enforcement. We're going to continue to support law enforcement because they make us proud and us safe every day. Um, I want to talk about the members of the General Assembly who came today, and I want to signal out a couple. Um, I, I did want to want to want to give them recognition for for it, so many of them, and I want to talk about them in a minute. But to to take time out that this being an issue that was so important to them to come from all points of the state and be here. And I wanted to start off with, with the South Carolina Senate and ask the, all the senators who are here, would you please raise your hand? <laughs> I'll be darned. <laughs> um, I do want, however, to <laughs> thank um, the members of the South Carolina House, all of them who voted for this bill making it possible, but many members who felt that this was an issue that we had to address, we wanted to address. It had been too long for South Carolina to address strengthening its Second Amendment. And I'm not going <laughs> to. But um, we have today with us, um, you can tell this is kind of orchestrated, but we have with us today um, Representative Bill Chumley, Representative Roger Nutt, Representative Micah Caskey, Representative Patrick Haddon, Representative Mike Burns, Representative Stuart Jones, Representative Cal, Cal Forrest. Um, I want to talk about, again, Bobby Cox in a moment, and I saw Jay West come in. That's an outstanding contingent from the South Carolina House to come. Thank you. Um, Bobby, um, this was an outstanding bill. Um, these ideas in this bill were many that you thought of and, and wrote, and everybody I know who's reviewed the bill has complimented it on how thorough it is, and I want to congratulate you. Bills have to start somewhere, and this bill started with Bobby Cox, who went out and got a tremendous number of sponsors who thought like him. Bobby, thank you for your ideas. I want to talk about Micah Caskey just a minute. You know, being, being the guy on the subcommittee that has to shepherd this bill through is, 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 is a tough thing. And Micah did it with, with great aplomb, not only during the committee process, but on the House floor. Micah, thank you for your wonderful leadership with this bill. Um, just to talk briefly about the bill and introduce the best governor in America, Henry McMaster, mm -hmm. I just want to say that um, not only is this legislation notable for this year, but it is the most advanced pro-Second Amendment legislation to pass out of the South Carolina General Assembly in over 25 years, 25 years. Um, this legislation is essential to the protection and fortification of our Second Amendment rights here in South Carolina. It puts our state in line with 25 other states across the country. We have been behind now we are moving to the point where we want to be. And as Mr. Cox says, with a little help from the Senate, we can go past that point. And that is our goal for next year. Um, this legislation accomplishes many, many important things. But sometimes I see it characterized as in the paper um, is, is just an open carry with training bill. This bill is, is not a one trick pony. It does many, many, many things to strengthen our Second Amendment. Um, it's obvious it allows for the open carry of a firearm with a CWP, but more importantly, um, it lessens that requirement, not to the extent of taking away training, but certainly we all know where we've been with ammunition in this state. Um, instead of 50 rounds, Bobby, I believe with your, with, with your insight, we now go to 25 rounds, which makes it easier, obviously, to get a CWP, more classes. It also eliminates the $50 CWP fee. So if you want to get a CWP, you can get a CWP at no cost to you. And that is an important thing, Bobby. I believe that. Um, at the same time, it allows for, as, as, as Representative Cox said, it allows for churches that meet on school property to decide if they will allow CWP holders to op open carry during their on-site services and related church activities. You might think that that's a, a no-brainer, an easy thing. I can tell you getting that through the house over the last three years has been a chore and we did it. We did it in this bill. 
but perhaps the most important thing about this legislation is that it does solidify South Carolina as a Second Amendment sanctuary state. It means no federal law that requires seizure of firearms that would be enforced by state law enforcement officials in South Carolina will be allowed. Simply put, it blocks the federal government's efforts to confiscate or over-regulate our Second Amendment rights here in South Carolina. So today, let's celebrate the signing of the biggest pro-Second Amendment legislation South Carolina has seen in 25 years, a truly incredible accomplishment, and we look forward to continuing the fight. Now it is my great honor to introduce the governor of the great state of South Carolina. My good friend, Henry McMaster, is, in my opinion, the greatest governor in the United States. We are lucky to have Henry. Henry works with us and not against us in the South Carolina House. Henry has taken an integral role, and I've been in Columbia for 24 years, and I have never seen a government governor that actually gets down in the weeds of, of budgeting and Second Amendment bills and is a partner with the South Carolina General Assembly like Henry McMaster is, and it is why the General Assembly particularly the South Carolina House, has enjoyed the success that, it had, that it's had over the last few years. So without further ado, I want to introduce my good friend and the, a great friend to the Second Amendment, Governor Henry Dargan McMaster. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, the finest speaker in the United States, hands down, no doubt. Yo, I'll be brief if uh, the others have already addressed most of the points, but you might have noticed a number of things. One thing is that uh, our, our people in South Carolina in making laws, studying laws, work as a team. The, the words collaborate, communicate, cooperate, uh, they're all over the place. And there was communication, collaboration, cooperation among the citizens, those involved in in, in firearms, those that not involved, uh, private businesses, one of which was uh, Palmetto Arsenal. We're delighted to be here today. Uh, another word that you heard a lot about is the uh, Second Amendment and also the Constitution. Everywhere we're standing, everything we're talking about today is awash with constitutional influence. And I'd like to remind the young people that when the Constitution, that the states formed the Constitution. We didn't have to, but we did because there were certain things that the states that had been doing those things themselves wanted to have a national government uh, able to do. And they were very strictly limited. And in, order, in, in addition to strictly limiting the things the national government was supposed to do, they divided the power to do those things into three parts. We didn't want to have a king. Three princes would be okay fighting against each other, none able to do anything by themselves. That's why we have the three branches of government. But as the Constitution was being debated and passed, it was noted, if you read the preamble to the, the Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments, it says that there were concerns about the power being given to the national government and whether they would restrict the rights of the people. Therefore, that we wanted the Bill of Rights not to create rights in the people, not to create them. The Constitution does not create any rights. It protects our rights. Jefferson described the natural law, others described our God-given rights, but freedom of speech, religion, assembly, and in the Second Amendment, the right to defend yourself, to protect the country, to protect your people, all of those are God-given rights, and they are, they are ours. And the fact that we've had to litigate and fight and debate that is something that is interesting for the scholars, but is being corrected now in 45, 46 states to make it clear that the people do have the right to carry and, and bear arms. And it says so in the Constitution in just a few words, but we're making it clear that that's what we believe in South Carolina. And as a side note, I'd say that was what we were studying, all of us here, in combating the coronavirus. We were careful that the Constitution allows state government, national government to do certain things and not others. 
because we cannot take people's property. You can't close down a business unless there's a good reason and it have to be able to explain it in the law and can be only in a limited time. And that's why we took the limited, careful approach that we did with the virus and are doing it now. And that is why, as you heard from the years it's taken to get this just right, as we have come in the, in the last few years and particularly today, to get this just right for the state of South Carolina, consistent with the Constitution of the United States. So my great uh, thanks, congratulations to all those involved. Uh, this, is, this is a good day for South Carolina. It is a happy day for law-abiding citizens, and I hope that we can continue to be an example, a good example, a strong example for the rest of the country. With that, if anyone has any questions, we'll try to answer them. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Well, we can do a number of things, one of which is what we're doing today. We are, we are saying once again that the people have a right to protect themselves. And we also, as the speaker mentioned, we have the finest law enforcement, uh, we think, in the United States. We are one state that has a statewide training academy. Uh, we'd, we'd like to have more of our officers going to that academy. We'd like to have more training to keep up with the latest good ideas and techniques, but we are proud of law enforcement in South Carolina. Would anyone else like to comment on that? Okay. I can't, can you say that again? I can't hear you. There you go. I don't know about those statistics, but this is allowed under the Constitution. We have a constitutional a right protected by the U.S. Constitution to bear arms. Okay. This is another step towards what many of us think the Constitution provides, and I'm in favor of anything that protects the citizens' right to keep and bear arms, I'm in favor of it, and I know those here are as well. Is there anything yeah. that the federal government is doing now that's going to change now that South Carolina is a sanctuary state? Any, any actual actions, or is this more symbolic of the future? Oh, it's, no, it's not symbolic. It's uh, it, it was very carefully uh, considered and tailored, and we sometimes we never know what the federal government might do, and that's one reason that that is in this act. Any more questions? Thank you. Now we'll sign up.